This one? Karimu. Karimu. Kamuya. 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 The summer. The summer. The summer. So that one was my fault. Earlier on, I was practicing the, the live to make sure it would go okay, which obviously it didn't. But then when I pressed to the Facebook to watch it back, that's what was playing when I was actually doing my live just now. So we were actually doing it correctly. And then my brain flipped out because I started do, watching the wrong, the wrong thing. So welcome back. Sorry about the start of that. Let's get into the presentation once more and uh, we will begin again. So we are straight back onto this. The, this. the postcard project began with the borehole project. So in 2017, the idea came around. In 2018, I went back to Uganda and shot the, um, the 37 children at the, at the borehole. So each picture was shot individually. It was an individual portrait and put back together to create this much larger image and then I went home uh, and over the next year I produced the the final image so in Photoshop put it all together and returned in 2019 to to share the project and the and the image with 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 the village so this is a picture of Tracy and I and now Tracy is pointing at herself in the in the picture and I won't go into this too much because it, I think it's it would much better fit a separate um, couple with tea. But all of the children in the picture got a little postcard sized image of of the borehole so they can keep it and remember their their time. And I bought the, the much larger print of the borehole back with me. And that was in February 2019. So over that summer, I started to think, how could I expand this project and move it forward and so I got in contact with the local library in Tavistock and the idea was I would put up the the large two meter wide borehole print and alongside all of the names of the children and I would invite people from Tavistock, children from Tavistock to write a postcard to any of the children in the picture that they wanted to. I just had to come up with the process of how that was going to go together and how it would, how the concept would, would work. So the idea was there and then I linked it with a talk. So I set up a talk called the borehole at, um, at the, sorry, there's that Facebook, it's the Facebook on the phone again. I'm not going to look at it anymore. So I organized a talk at the library and um, put a date on it. And once you put a date on it, then that again it commits you to to following through with the project. So um, I've got the venue, organised the talk for August 9th, two thousand and nineteen. Um, put the information in the local newspaper along with the image, which is always a great way to share with the local community. And so the picture of Tracy and I and the larger borehole picture is there. And the, the headline they used was powerful image will be used to forge links between cultures. And that's exactly what I like to try and do when I share my photography is share a bit of Africa with you. And when I'm in Africa, I like to share a bit of home with um, the local families there. So that's that's the premise for the postcard project and getting the children from Tavistock to write a postcard, design a postcard. And on the next trip in 2020, I was going to deliver it to the um, back to the children. And in my mind, this was all going to work perfectly. I knew where the children were and I knew what the process was. 
and we just I just started rolling with it. So once I knew I had the venue and the exhibition space, um, I designed a booklet that talked about the borehole um, photograph. It had all the names of the children, so anyone visiting the the show would be able to flick through and just read about it. And it's really important because you can put one big picture up and it's still, it might be mesmerizing, it might be amazing to look at, but there is a story behind it and beyond it. And that's the important part of having a booklet like that and being able to present a talk around the same time because then it gives people the option to, um, to find out a little bit more, get a little bit more information. Um, and then they feel a bit more part of it. And so that was the booklet. Then the next process was um, the instructions of, you know, how to write a postcard, which is not always the easiest thing. So the, um, so it was quite, it was quite straightforward. There was lots of steps to it. Um, you know, it's a case of just picking up one of the white cards using the pens, not putting any real personal details beyond your first name, but some ideas about drawing your house, your family, your pets, asking a few questions about sports. Um, because I knew that the children were quite young in Uganda and we would have to translate everything from each postcard so they would be able to respond and write back. So I didn't want anything too detailed, just something fun and some pictures. And then that would um, instantly create a bit of a connection um, between Tavistock and um, the village where I stay in Uganda. And if we go right back to when I was about 10 or 11 years old, there was a letter that I received from um, a guy called John Killingbeck, who was doing a trip in Antarctica with sled dogs. And I believe it was the last sled dog trip through Antarctica, I might be wrong. But the we wrote to him as a small school group and then he wrote back answering all of our questions. So I knew that that letter had come from all the way in Antarctica. I luckily still have the letter. I don't know how I managed to keep the letter, um, but it's my connection with a place that I might never go to. But if I do go to it, I can take that letter back with me. So the whole, the whole idea of children in Tavistock uh, being able to write to somebody in Uganda in a picture that they've seen, and maybe 10 years later they find their their postcard or they remember the postcard and they've received one back and they look at it and they might be into traveling they might be into photography and then suddenly they're like wow i'm i'm going to uganda i might go to uganda or try and get in contact with that person they might even contact me to then try and connect them so it's not necessarily for right now although that's the fun part it's in 10 years time 15 years time that they, they still have a connection to Uganda and they remember that, that process. So it's much bigger than just a picture or just a postcard. It really is connecting, connecting people. So how did it work? Well, people would go into the library. They would um, have a good look at the picture. All of the names were written and pinned below. They would choose who they wanted to write to based on uh, they might see that they're the same height, the same age, roughly, um, girl or boy. And then they would pick up one of these red dots and put the red dot on the name. That was mainly for me to know that we'd got a postcard for everybody and, um, and that nobody was left out, but also to know that how many postcards we, we had. So it was quite a straightforward process. And that was the setup. That's what it looked like. And once the kids had written their postcards, they would post them in a shoebox. And at the end of the month, I would I would collect them, and then um, the, the next stage would begin. So, I, like I said, I did a small talk at the library um, about the borehole. So, it introduced the picture in a very simple way of how it was created. There was a bit of education on boreholes for the children that were there. And they saw the the kit that I was using to create the the images. So that was it was good fun, and I really enjoyed doing those because it's it brings that personal touch to the to the process and connects people even further to what I'm doing. At the end of the um, 
at the end of the exhibition in the library, I went and wrapped up the picture, picked up the shoebox uh, with all the postcards in and took them home, cracked it open and found some real um, fantastic postcards inside, inside the box. People have worked really hard on, on the designs. So we've got some monsters in that first one. Um, we've got a landscape in this one, which looks like there's some birds, the sunshine, a little woodland trees and a small house on the right hand side. And that, that sort of thing is really interesting because the, the kids in Tavistock will see things completely different to the kids in Uganda. And at this point, I was excited to see that there was some pictures like this. And when we take them to Uganda, see what the response and the designs were on the kids' pictures. And this one is to Betty uh, from Amelia, age 10. And it says, what do you like to do in your spare time? I love making up stories and playing with my friends. So very, very simple, uh, nice and easy to respond, very colourful and a great, great postcard by Amelia. And I was looking forward to taking all of these ones back with me. So this is the front and back of each postcard. Um, and so, yeah, I photographed them all before I went because I was going to give the actual copy of the postcard to, uh, to the children and they were getting to keep it. So I wanted to make sure I had a copy of those, um, of those postcards. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick across to the film of how this project carried on. So this is where it ended in Tavistock and I'd photographed everything. And earlier this year in January, I went out to Uganda and after a couple of weeks, we, um, we ran the, the postcard project. Uh, we got Kareem uh, to go off and find all the children and let them know to be at Mama Maganda's house in the garden at a certain time on a certain day. And, you know, that's where this video picks up. And I might talk a little bit through it. You'll see me in the bottom left hand corner. But just enjoy this um, video. And this is how the, the rest of the project went down. And I'll see you through it or just afterwards. Right. The big borehole picture, yeah? When I'm looking at the And children in my hometown of Tavistock have written to you and written you a postcard. They've asked you some questions and they've drawn some pictures. And we've got the pencils and you guys can write on the inside of this one over there as well. Nangobi? Not here yet. Not here. Mate. <laughs> so hopefully you should be able to hear me right now. This this is the fun part. All the, all the kids had arrived. Karim had done a fantastic job, and we were giving out the postcards. Um, I'd wrapped them in the postcard that they were going to reply with, so I'd gone and bought some green card. Uh, the postcard from the UK is tucked inside. And um, all the kids collected theirs, and then it was time to um, pick up the uh, the pens and just get cracking. So this this is the name of the person that's written to you. So Mastu has got Claire. The girl is called. You write to Jasmine. 
draw a picture. Who would you like to write to? Would you like to write for Shira? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to George? I think he's three. He's age three. So here we are. The postcard project is underway. We've got about 45 kids. There was 30, 37 in the initial borehole project, but some people haven't had, um, some people haven't turned up, so we've had to give them to others. And we've had about 10 other people turn up, so they've been given extra ones. So we have two more. We know where Ralph is. Will he be back tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, where is he? Uh, Playing with Ralph this morning. Hello, and he lost the, uh, lost the tennis ball down the oh. toilet. So and the <laughs> So I was actually, I was actually amazed at how calm this process was, apart from uh, the, some of the drawing was a bit crazy. But in the in the garden was this um, shed, which is actually going to be turned into a shop. And so it was going to make the perfect background for, for the portraits. Um, because I wanted to get a picture of the kids with the, the postcard that was sent to them and then the reply that they were sending back. And so as soon as the picture was taken, they handed over the reply to Marisha D, who was a huge help with the translation. Um, and yeah, they had an orderly queue and they just came in one by one. We got a couple of portraits of each of them. And, you know, we were, we were having a good time. <laughs> Is David getting a little bit fancy with his uh, angles shooting through one of the holes in the in the wooden shop? Uh, but Sekamu means smile, so we're saying that quite a lot, and everyone's encouraging everyone to smile, and that sometimes turns into some, uh, crazy laughs, which is awesome. Yeah, there's Karim, the guy that pulled it all together. He went off to three different villages to find everyone and bring them all together. And this was the set up pretty straightforward, pretty calm. My smile. Just chilling on the on the grass. So from my point of view, it was, I was completely good, perfect on, on the subject. And it was a case of the boys were controlling the crowd. And as always, okay, so. Postcard, the whole postcard project. It's pretty much complete. I've just got to deliver their responses back to the UK. This one. Yeah. Have you got one? No. Where's no? that guy? Does anyone not have one? <laughs> oh, it's like chaos and the carnage of giving out the lollipops. They will try and queue up twice. <laughs> But here they are. I'm sure there's some interesting ones in there. But this one's from Ryan and it's going to Scarlet. So we're Valley Ryan, we're Valley Scarlet. Thank you to the team. Thank you to the boys. How are we doing on the pen? Any any left? So what amazed me the most was actually that there were still pencils left that they haven't gone missing. So we collected them all up because he's, he's an artist, he loves drawing, so he collected them and luckily he, he got to keep them. Um, but then we played football for a couple of hours with the tennis ball using the, the backdrop of the studio as, as the goal. So the sun was setting and we'd done our work and it was an amazing time. And then this, these are the these are the images. These are some of the portraits that that came out from that um, from that sitting. So we've got uh, Lasoma on the left. I'm not quite sure of the the guy's name just on the inside there, uh, but I've met Lasoma quite a lot and I've photographed him over the last four years. So he's getting bigger. He's getting cooler. And unfortunately, at some point, they're all going to get too cool to do some of these these portraits. So. It's lovely to be able to go each year and, and put on a little project like this that um, they really get involved in. They obviously get a lollipop, but to connect the people back in Tavistock this time added a huge extra dimension to it. And so we'll flick through a couple of the girls. 
and then this is the this is the scene. This is one of my favourite photos, and it's my, of my little mate Ralph, and he's sitting there with both of his um, both of his postcards, orderly queue, and this is uh, I would say this is my favourite portrait from the um, from the shoot, and the postcards there, and there's a little picture in that one. Uh, there's a little lad called Will from Tavistock, who who designed this monsters postcard and he put a picture of himself in so Ralph was able to see him and not everybody did that but I was glad that a couple of people did and um, I was able to send a video to Will of of Ralph receiving his postcard and so he got that so it was an extra connection again on top of on top of that his little Shira with her two postcards and then at the end, you've got all of the kids. You would have seen that in the video. All of the kids up and waving their postcards that they get to that they get to keep, and we've got their postcards nice and safe. So how did it all keep organised? Well, each postcard, each one of these postcards, which is the uh, response from Uganda to the UK, had a number. That number was linked to the number on the one that was sent, and I've got a sheet at home or I had it on the phone with me that that I was able to link up all the names so it wouldn't get too lost. But what I love about these postcards is they are they're covered in the orange orange mud from Uganda. They're completely um, natural. They you know we didn't tell them what to write. They designed what they wanted to. In some of the postcards, there's just squiggles because the kids were quite young. They didn't even answer all the questions back to the UK postcards. But the names are on the front, there's some scribbles on the inside, and to me that's a successful project. But we're not complete yet because I returned back on the 6th of March, and then very quickly we obviously got put down into the, um, the lockdown. And so I haven't been to the library to, to share the, the rest of the project with them. But since I've been back, I have photographed all of the... Um, the other postcards and, and I've combined them all together. So for me personally, I have a copy of both um, postcards. And so when everything's back up and running, I'll be putting both copies into, into the library. And those who wrote to Uganda will have the original copy of, of their response um, back to keep, which is, uh, which is really important to keep the, um, keep the project true um, but if we come back to my face um, told you it was going to be a little bit shorter today um, but that's the postcard project and like I said at the beginning it, it unconsciously began in 2017 and photographing those children each year I wanted to keep evolving it and there is another shoot that happened in between which I will share with you at another point um, called Dream Studio. That's all on the website if you wanted to check it out. But the the postcard project is my first project where I've actually connected, or it was the first project where I've connected people at home with the the people that I work with out in in Uganda. And I think it's it's been an amazing experience, and I'm really looking forward to delivering um, these postcards because they're sitting up there. That way, everything's backwards up there on the. Uh, on the shelf ready to ready to send out um, but that's that's pretty much it today sorry about the start I completely confused myself because I was watching an old replay of me um, testing all that all out so that screwed me up but we got there in the end the main bulk of it is in in the show and I'm gonna finish my cup of tea and then go outside because it's an amazing day but thank you very much for stopping by if anyone's got any questions, um, oh, will you do a photo shoot with the kids back in the UK? Possibly not. Maybe it might be an option, but I think a lot of the um, times the kids in the UK would like to be kept anonymous um, by the families, which is which is fair enough. Um, and I would love to be able to take sort of like I did with Will. He he sent his own picture in, and I took that out to him. I uh, took that out to Ralph and they shared it between them. But for from the UK side, it's it's very much 
not about publishing who's been sending the postcards. It's a very, um, and you, you, you know, there's a, there's a conflict there. And what about sharing the kids from Uganda back this way? And I completely understand that. But we, you know, I discussed that with the group, the children, the, the families when I'm out in Uganda and they don't have a problem with it. If any of the children from the UK want to be photographed with their postcard and put alongside the the, the portrait of their, their friend in Uganda, then, you know, that will be an option. And if they want to do that, then, you know, we'll work out the permissions and then we'll, we'll go from there. So it's not a no. It's just I don't. I don't make that part of the project officially. It's if the if the families in the UK want that to happen. Um, but the next 30 seconds will be a flick through of all of the postcards that were sent and all of the postcards I've bought back. But yeah, any further questions, just give me a shout and um, please enjoy the sunshine because it is amazing outside. And that is it. Couple of tea. This is number 10. 10 weeks now this has been going. And I keep pushing it and I keep messing it up, but it's always good fun. Have a great day.